Hello, everybody, and welcome to Imagination TV. And today we are focusing on the theme, Flipping the Script. And we've got a bumper of a show coming your way. We're going to launch uh, Imagine the Feature Film. So we've got a Google Doc we've prepared for all of you to jump in and become writers in a feature film. And what's so important to us with the value of Flipping the Script is so often we are told that we are destined to play our part in someone else's story. And for so many kids outside the margins around the world, you're told from day birth often that, your role is to fill a role where maybe you're going to be perpetually disadvantaged, where maybe you're always going to be on the outside looking in and, and geez, that's, that's sad, but that's the way it's going to be. Now, I don't believe in that. I believe that we all have the ability to break out of that script that's been written for us and to pick up a pen or pick up a pencil and start writing a new role. And once we play that role, then we all start to create a new story around that. And that's what we're going to kickstart today. So we've got a wonderful panel that's joining us later on. And today we're lucky to be partnered with Miami State High School. We've got Kalani as our co-host. Kalani, how are you going? I'm good, thanks, Jack. How are you going? Good, Cos. How are you feeling about the show today and about being co-host? Oh, first of all, I love, I love being co-host and it's definitely something that I've been wanting to do. Um, as well as that, it's going to be, we've got a good lineup for the show, so I can't wait to get into it. We've got, we've got good guests. Yeah, awesome. We've got some comments coming from the chat line. We've got Penny saying, Wool, so keen. We've got Edward saying, how's everyone going today? I'm going pretty good, Edward. Thank you for asking. We've got Georgie saying, let's go. Rianne saying, love the hoodie. How do I get one? Rianne, we're going to let you know in a little bit of time when the show um, gets moving through. Okay, let's go to our 60-second challenge. And our first 60-second challenge is with Nell Greenwood from Afters, who are our official partner of the episode today. Nell, how are you? Very good. Jack, thank you so much for having me. It's such a delight to be here and I'm so excited to see what you all do. It's an absolute pleasure. Are you ready to take on the 60 second challenge? I am. I'm terrified and excited. I'm a bit like what I'm about to start writing, I'm imagining. All right, let's go. Okay, what's your idea of perfect happiness? Being in my garden with my chickens and my kids. What's your greatest fear? Uh, unfulfillment, lack of fulfillment. What quality do you most like in puppets? Uh, joy. What quality do you most value in people? Uh, oh, I was going to say joy again. <laughs> what do you consider your greatest achievement? Uh, I think helping people who lack confidence to have the confidence they need to be uh, creative and brilliant. What is your most treasured possession? I have to say my kids. Are they a possession? Maybe not, but yeah, that extension. <laughs> that's, that's another question. I don't know if I can answer that today. Who are your favourite writers? Uh, I love Toni Morrison. I love um, Tolstoy. Uh, I love, um, oh gosh, that's pretty enough. Who are your heroes <laughs> in real life? Uh, okay, I love uh, Greta Thunberg. I think Greta Thunberg's awesome. She's got courage and she's active beliefs and she's got the courage to act on them. Um, and I think people who, you know, are able to live with integrity and courage. And that wraps up the 60 second challenge. Congratulations, Nell. Thank you for joining us. And we're pumped to work with you guys on this and share the opportunity for writers throughout the afters world to come on and, and write this feature film with us. And uh, to Rianne's question earlier, we're releasing 500, over 500 filmmaker grants, which are gonna uh, feature this hoodie for creators to be able to, 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 to get one of these and go out and create this feature film with us uh, from July into, 
into August and then we'll, we'll get editing. So great to work with such a good institution and a brave institution, an imaginative institution like after. So thanks for joining us. My pleasure. Good luck, everyone. Awesome. All right, we're going to jump over to Miami State High School. We've got the principal, Sue Dalton, ready to take on the 60-second challenge. Sue, how are you feeling? Yeah, really good, thanks. All right, <laughs> getting, well, ready Kalani. <laughs> getting ready for Kalani. Getting ready for All right, Kalani, have you got a question that you want to ask outside of the 60-second challenge for your principal? <laughs> No, 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 I think I, I've asked a lot of the questions before, so I think I'll have to see what you've got lined up for it, Dad. All right, let's get ready to rumble. Okay. Time has started now. Okay, what quality do you most value in people? Sincerity. Who is your hero of fiction? Wonder Woman. Which historical figure do you most identify with? Ooh, pass. <laughs> where, where would you most like to live? Gold Coast. What do you consider your greatest achievement? My family. If you were to die and come back as a person or a thing, what would it be? Oh, Diana, Princess Diana. Which words or phrases do you most overuse? Hmm, I don't know. Kalani might be able to answer that, but talk to me about. I often ask to say that. Talk to me about. What are your favourite names? Kalani. What Ripley. is your <laughs> And as every student in the school goes, ah, oh, bummer. Um, what's your motto? Um, do what is right, not what is easy. What do you most value in your friends? Um, honesty and integrity. So thank you for being a part of the 60 Second Challenge. Thank you for partnering us with us and it's great to work with the kids at your school. And oh, it's a pleasure. It's wonderful partnering with you. It's great. Awesome. Thanks for joining us. All right, Kalani, how did, how did your principal go? What score would you give her? Definitely a 10 out of 10. That was, that was much much better than I would have done. Awesome. All right, well, let's jump into our wizardry. We've now got Robin. Robin Tampo, how are you? You're ready for your 180 seconds of wizardry. We're ready for you. Sweet. Thanks, Jack. Yeah, I'm pretty excited to be a part of Imagination TV. So well, my name is Robin Tampo. Let's go for it. Okay. So my name is Robin Tampo, and I am a filmmaker. Uh, so basically in the film industry, I'm known as a DOP or a director of photography. Uh, so basically, I'm in charge of controlling what the film looks like and making sure I achieve the director's and producer's vision. Um, I must tell you guys is that filmmaking is fun. And no matter who you are or where you are from, you can do it. And there's a couple of traits in my industry and little elements that you start to love. For instance, in my trade, which is camera, we have lenses. And I've got a couple of lenses here, which my widest lens being the 24 millimeter lens and sort of the longest lens being this 70 to 200 millimeter lens. This is kind of like the longest focal length. So basically in short, the smaller the number, the wider the lens gets, and the larger the number, the tighter the lens. That's kind of like the gist of it. So basically in my career, I've worked on feature films, film clips, commercials, and I'm particularly passionate about documentaries. And for the past three and a half years, I've been a director of photography for this documentary regarding the climate crisis and the climate movement in Australia. And we've got a clip to show you at the end of this, but to finish, finish it off, my message to you all is that if you guys, you guys stuck at home, if you wanna be a filmmaker, all you gotta do is be creative and talented. It doesn't, you don't have to have a sort of like achievements or any sort of thing. You just have to dream it and you can do what you wanna achieve. So all it takes is a pen, paper, and a camera phone and sort of like a, even a tablet and you can start uh, you can start creating content so imagine it believe it and you can achieve it thank you and here's a little clip of some of the work that I've done you can mine something once but we can farm this land forever we had a, a meeting in the town hall and there was a, nearly a thousand people in the town hall and it, everybody voted against you. For all those who would like to oppose this coal mine, please raise your hand. You can put up two if you feel really strong. <laughs> Thank you. We are inside the world's biggest coal port. There is 60 or so people locked on, and we are calling for an end to fossil fuel.
Robin, thank you for telling stories. Thank you for being brave, imagining, and then doing the most important part, which is doing and, and creating and, and finishing off that picture. So thanks for joining us as a wizard today. You're fantastic. Thanks for having me, Jay. It was really great to be a part of this show. My pleasure, my pleasure. All right, we're about to get into our thinkers panel. Kalani, we're moving fast today. You keeping up? Keeping up for sure. Now, Robin, I was thinking, uh, you talked about lenses and if there was something that you could shine a lens on that you really thought was something that you're really passionate about, what, what would that be? Oh, I figured and we lost Robin. Um, and we've lost, yeah. we'll, we'll throw that question to the audience, which is, yeah, if you're something you could shine a lens on and look differently at, what, what would that be? We're going to the, the chat line. We've got Matty Webb saying, so epic. Georgie saying, yes, Kalani, good to have you back. Jason Bernal, do what is right, not what is easy. That's gold. Ro Ro Rianne Miller saying, go Robin. Robbie Miller saying, well done, Sue. And Sam Oliver saying, this show is keeping me on, on my toes. All right, well, let's keep moving. We've got our thinkers panel up next. Let's jump into an intro video and get rolling. If you don't want to work, don't bother dreaming. Shame is just nothing. All of us have dealt different cards, and those cards can be awful. But it's what you do. You are responsible for your reaction. Welcome to our Thinkers panel today as we're gathering on the broad topic of, of flipping the script. Yael, tell me, what does is, what is flipping the script mean to you in your world? Uh, my favourite thing is a script. Um, it's where I start all my work from. Um, so I kind of get handed, for want of a better term, a Bible from writers and then uh, it sparks my imagination from there. So it's my jumping off point. It's a, it's a precious thing. As soon as I get my script, I mark it up, I'm highlighting it. I'm, um, I'm kind of reverential about my script. So... In terms of flipping it, I guess the flip is that I'm here today to help write the script and that's an unusual position for me and a really cool one. Scott, tell us about your story um, in a nutshell and, and what, what drives you to tell stories, to create scripts, to, to create worlds. Uh, thanks, Jack. Uh, well, that's a great question. I, uh, well, being Aboriginal, I'd like to say, Jun uh, Gadigili, Yanningi. Good yani, which is it's a good morning today, everyone. And uh, it is exactly that. My cultural uh, background has been the driving force of everything that I do. And it's within my blood and ancestry that we share stories. I struggled a lot at school and I struggled to read um, at, at a very young age. And I had to actually uh, get dependent on audiobooks and listening to a lot of things because growing up, that's all my elders did was tell us stories and pass that oral tradition and we had to listen to the stories. And uh, from a very young age, I've been listening to so much of my elder stories that uh, I had this huge, deep desire to share stories and come up with uh, stories, but also share an essence of my Aboriginality through those stories. And if you'd like to say flipping the script, I feel from a societal level, you know, the script on Aboriginal people has always been this negative uh, stereotype placed upon us. And uh, by flipping that script, I'd love to create a new world, a new perspective, challenge perspective through the stories that I bring to life. And that's through my comic uh, uh, superhero universe that I'm creating and through all of these other kind of animations and illustrations that I'm currently doing and developing. So it's all very, it's about impacting perspective. And uh, if it changes people's perspective on Aboriginal people and also provides empowerment to younger Aboriginal people, but to young people across the world, um, I am there to do that. So, yeah, brother. It's worth getting out of bed every morning for, I reckon. Yeah. Uh, shout out to Zaylin, to Brianna and to Bliss who are joining us live in the audience today from Miami State High School. Great to have you guys here with us. And Randy Feltface, I think we have you as our third panellist today. Randy, how are you? I'm great, Jack. Thanks, Matt. How are you going? Uh, I'm, I'm in a state of pleasure having to be able to acquaint myself with you once more. Well, thank you so much. I'm in a constant state of pleasure anytime I'm doing anything with the AIM mob, so it's nice to be back. Nice to see you. You're all looking delightful. What a panel. What a panel. My hey, flipping, goodness, flipping. Randy, you look absolutely radiant this morning. Oh, you thank you so flip? much. I think it's, it's, my, it's my AIM T-shirt really sets things off. Um, I can't I actually like see myself, so... Who knows yeah. what's happening? No, you look fantastic. Don't doubt it. Thank you. Thank you. 
Randy, what's flipping the script mean to you? Uh, well, look, I mean, personally, I really um, appreciate a little bit of rebelliousness in my art. I really like to see people who take existing forms and uh, put a new spin on them. So I'm always looking at things, trying to look at things from a different angle, particularly in my writing. So if there's something that I'm really passionate about, I try to find the, um, a different way into it, maybe a, a way of looking at things that other people might not necessarily have um, have looked at them from that angle. So for me, flipping the script is taking a concept, taking an idea, taking a thought process, taking a situation and stepping outside of it and looking at it from a different point of view and trying to present that back in the most entertaining, enjoyable and thought-provoking fashion possible. Now, Randy, you have been described as everybody's favourite non-human comedian. Mm-hmm. And, and with that being said, you're definitely my favourite non-human comedian. What, what, <laughs> what's something that you would say to the young people out watching the show that for people that want to get into an art form that may not just be visual arts or may not just be dance, but, but something, you know, you like your form of comedy? Mm, great question. Thank you for asking that. Well, firstly, um, that line, everybody's favourite non-human comedian, I wrote that line. That, that is the first line in my bio. I penned that myself. So a great place to start is to create your own story. You know, you, the first thing I, I think the most important thing to do is find your voice and allow yourself the time to find your voice, to fail, practice, try different things until you settle on a voice that you believe is truest to yourself and then unapologetically present that voice to the world and, and, and continue to evolve as you learn new things. Just get out there. I think that's a great lead for us, Randy, to get unapologetic about creation and to remove any preconceptions we have of fear and failure and shame and throw them out the window. Yael, Scott and Randy, let's get ready to write the feature film Imagine. Oh, my God, you guys. Okay. Ah! (laughs) We got this. For anyone in the audience that wants to be a part of this, uh, there's two opportunities for you to be, or three opportunities for you to be involved. The first one, uh, all of these are on aimmentoring.com. So if you go to aimmentoring.com in your browser now, you can grab the link uh, for the Google Doc. So that's there. And that's open and live for any of you to jump in. So Bliss, Bree, Zaylan, I'll be checking afterwards that you've contributed at least something, even if it's a full stop or a question mark or some sort of idea. So that's that's your responsibility as part of being in the live audience today. And anyone that's commented today, I'll be going back and finding your personal contact details and writing to you if you haven't added to the film as well. So that gives us about 50 writers to get going. The second one for those creators out there to take on the challenge set by Robin, if you want to get yourself a creator grant, you can apply on aimmentoring.com, a very short application. You'll gain yourself a hoodie, you'll get yourself a mentor, and we'll have 500 filmmakers working together around the world to create, imagine the film, to tell a story of these times and the times that we're imagining for, for humanity in the future. And then thirdly, if you want to partner with us and sponsor uh, the creation of those hoodies so we can give out some more filmmaker grants, um, you can kick in $5,000, $10,000 and, and get in touch with us to get that going. So that's the preamble. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to open up the the Google Doc and we're going to get going on the show. So it says, imagine the feature film. Scott, Yael, Heath, where do we start? Well, I just want to, I want to begin by setting the the writing scene. And I feel like between Scott, Heath and I, I hope we all agree that there's a kind of communal, communal love and acceptance when we're making something new. Um, and if we can sort of spread those feelers of love all the way through the internet to everyone who's going to be working on this project, because I have found um, as a very old person who's worked in that artistic industry for some time that saying yes and saying yes and rather than no but works a lot better and is a lot more fun celebrating someone's ideas giving them the time to germinate because some of us work really fast and some of us work slower um so just knowing that we're when we're in the room maybe it's the internet room um of life and we're creating something together just really like giving energy in in a super positive way makes for a better project than being like oh yeah I don't think so I don't think so and in the name of that I bought this little honker along to celebrate really good ideas (laughs) it's very loud (laughs) 
Well, communally, um, yes, and to that, yeah, El, I've I've added in. It's been the first words that we've added in there: communal love and acceptance. Yeah, El Stone saying yes, and and um, I'm so happy that I said yes, and to an attitude in my life, which led to us falling in love and having a baby. So we're going to we might don't tell that. everyone. Oh, don't tell everyone. Okay. Uh, all right, let's go. Let's go. Where are we? Where, what are we doing in this world? Scott, Randy, yeah, let's. We've got ten minutes to create. This is the best thing ever. All right. So, what do you reckon, guys? World. We start. We're going to start with a small, knowable world. Are we going to start with characters? Where do you guys want to kick off? Well, I actually uh, a lot of my imagination is. A journey, um, but then again, it also has to coexist with uh, more so that finding that story and where does this exist? And I've lo- just recently I've been playing around with dreams and kind of uh, I wouldn't say astro sleeping, but moving outside of that body experience uh, when you go to sleep into this uh, imaginative world that you told. Love to yeah hear your thoughts about. Uh, whether that's the character we start with to ultimately find that story or the story to actually evolve into a character that's running that journey. So, Cool. I've been thinking about primordial soup as well, that place where where everything begins, like a dream, uh, like the like the oceans before any creatures ever existed, um, when lightning shoots down and energizes microbes and and begins the start of life. I love that that dream space, and I feel like we're in that dream space right now with COVID. It's all a bit murky, and that's the most exciting place because that's when the biggest surprise comes. That's when the biggest creation sets in. I love this. I love this 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 combination of primordial soup in the beginning, epic kind of, uh, you know, like you said, the lightning striking and the bubbling sulfur pits, and you know, little creatures starting to crawl their way out of the primordial soup, combined with the concept of a dreamscape. That's uh, they're both really kind of abstract but quite tangible places to start. I love this. I reckon. Um, I reckon you're both staying on the money there. We can and let's, little- let's let's now just go into this world. We've got a you know a dreamscape. We've got sulfur pits, which I love as an idea. Um, we've got some lightning striking. And do we have a name of anything or anyone Ooh. that that we could Ooh. we could find in that landscape? Or, or are we not there yet? Name. I think as the character actually discovers and come becomes acquainted with this world because sorry jack just to back it up i kind of had this huge vision like just come over me that we uh, actually let's just say a young person is laying in bed and the camera's like going looking at the chaotic uh room with all this messy clothing along the room and this uh, young person whether it's a boy a girl they or them uh in that bed that uh, every time, maybe let's just say it was a particular time of the year and they fell asleep. And then every time they closed their eyes, they'd be transported into this new plane, this, whether it's with lightning and that. And every time they open their eyes, they're back in their room. But for them to stay in this space, they have to keep their eyes closed and take that leap of faith. And they're like, enter this world uh, where I can just feel it right now. It's like uh, they get dropped in kind of like a Jumanji kind of feel where the rock is like falling through the trees and landing. Uh, but there's like a maybe like a nice uh, cushiony bed that they fall and land on, you know. What what, what color what color is their room? What what color is the is the room of this person that's asleep? I think it's Ooh. so messy you can't see it. It's completely cluttered and chaotic. And I think when they close their eyes and whatever they see in that dream space is kind of echoed a little bit in the room so if they like hit a rock in the dream space it's a huge you know a box full of dvds or something you know it's like the space space echoes the dream yeah i love that idea i love that idea of when you you know when you're falling asleep or your room's plunged into darkness and you look around the room and various things in your room take on other shapes like a jacket on the back of a chair looks like a monster or you know maybe there's that that cross there's a beautiful image that you set up in terms of plunging into darkness or closing your eyes and then falling into this primordial space wherever it is maybe it is a direct sort of link between the space that the person's 
surrounded by and then transforming into this other world. You could really draw the little link there as a first setup. How, how do you, if a dream happens, how do you, how do, how do we, do we have a device that creates that dream? Is it a bump? Is it something or like what sends us into that space? I, I wonder if they're like kind of like Scott was, when Scott was talking about it, it was like it was flickering in and out. Like when you're just kind of like hanging on to reality and, and, and then the last, maybe the last moment, just holding on to reality, maybe the young person like looks under the bed, like, oh gosh, is there, what is kind of confused is there a monster under the bed is there something did I hear something and as they look under this huge claw comes up out of the bed and just kind of pulls them by the by the scruff of the neck and sucks them into the bed and that's when we go into the full dream space that sounds absolutely deadly I had this like uh to add to that it's like um because I see what Jack is saying where it's like what if this young person is at that stage where they're transitioning into what society wants to, them to be, whether it's that adult. And for Aboriginal people, uh, there's an, uh, we call it law, L-O-R-E, where we go through initiation to become a man. And maybe this is at that period where, you know, the world is trying to get them to initiate into becoming this, uh, what they want them to be. But this world is actually getting them to undiscover who they are as a person through the journey that they go through this dystopian landscape. I love that. And, and when we were talking before, I think I, I said something about finding your voice earlier. And then we were talking about how to name this person, maybe part of this journey in this landscape, wherever they go to, to kind of realize their, you know, who they are at this point in time. Maybe it is a, a quest for the name or a search for a name, or maybe that's part of it that you get given that or that whatever trials they have to kind of endure or whatever journey they have to take at the end of that, they kind of realize a truer version of themselves. Oh, I love that. I love that, Randy. And what what about if at the end of the, the culmination of however long this dream sequence is, they're kind of like handed their name or they discover their name somewhere. They come back into to their real conscious world and, and we just and we learn as the audience that they've been maybe bullied their whole life because their name didn't fit them. Maybe it was like, I don't know, some ill-fitting name for, for like a really cool embodied person and it just never felt right maybe it's like Gerald and they're not really a Gerald you know and they, <laughs> and they decide no no this is my new name and this is what I'm going to be called and and that's like the beginning of their their self-actualization 100 yeah. percent. that sounds absolutely deadly I um I was actually thinking about throwing in like a bit of physics and like looking at time does time stop like in this place or like do they actually realize that they aren't asleep? Their body's actually projected into this place. And uh, they've actually been gone for like, you know, maybe a night. And then people discover, oh, where have you gone? And then they don't believe that person. And uh, I had pictured the ending where they're like uh, turning around and it ends with, I need you now just to imagine. And then it like cuts, like, because we've already seen what he's, oh, he, she, they, them have already gone through. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a dramatic scene. I love that. And I, I, I think we're building a world now as well where this person has a, a life outside of this um, dreamscape that maybe, maybe they're trying to escape or maybe um, they don't feel as comfortable in their, in their skin or in their world or in their home or at their school or wherever it is, this young person. So that this, this idea of this, um, this dreamscape is, a, is kind of that classic place of safety and self-discovery. So maybe there's a scene prior to this moment where, you know, at the moment we're starting with falling into the dream, but maybe we establish a bit of that life outside of this dream world first. So is, how is life at home? How is life at school? How is life on, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis? What is this person escaping from? What are these words and actions around them that are shaping them to make them want to retreat to find their true self in this beautiful, safe kind of challenging dreamscape world. Yeah. It's, it's such a, I mean, for, for me, um, as a, like kind of from the age of 14 to, to 17, I felt really, uh, I felt really misunderstood. And I think, you know, that's a feeling that can stay with us for a long time for all of our lives. It's just, we make a different kind of peace with it as we go along. Mm. But, but as you're really creating that, 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 that sense of your own self as you move into your initiation as an as an adulthood uh, in your adulthood pardon me you you can really start to notice 
I feel misunderstood because I feel different. And flipping the script on that is maybe that difference is, is my greatest strength. That thing that makes me feel misunderstood and a little alone right now is one day going to be the thing that lifts me up. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have reached a point where we need the horn, yell. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's let's recap where we got to in somewhere between 10 to 13 wonderful, wonderful, wonderful minutes. All right, we've got setting up the values with communal love and acceptance. Um, oh, actually, before I get there, anyone who's jumped into the, the document, if you could just tag um, the section that you con contributed to and add a comment with your name and then we'll be able to keep track of, of who's contributed to what and keep your names in the credits as well. And we'll share the link with um, with yourself, Yael, Scott and, and Randy after this. So we, we, we kick start a, this communal love and acceptance to the creative process. As we want to take in this idea of yes and. We find a youngster through Randy, this idea that there's, there's a world potentially where we're establishing them in a real world, where we're looking at what do they look like to be misunderstood, to be in that maybe they're a 14 to 17 year old as we're sketching this idea. We then land in a bedroom and the bedroom is messy beyond all ever sense of mess. There's mess so far, so far covering it that the child can't actually even find their way into the bed. Uh, there's mess that falls out the doors when you're getting through and it becomes a tunnel for them to even find their way into the bed. And then when they go to sleep one day, this claw comes up, hacks them down, pulls them underneath the bed and then we end up in in this oceans before anything has existed, microbes, dream space, bubbling, sulfur pits, lightning, exploding world. And in that world, we start going on a journey of working out what time and space is that you're being transported into these different worlds and spots. Um, we're, we're going through initiation through Scott's idea um, and then we're getting to a bunch of other wonderful things. Uh, you get a trial and error of different names. You're discovering your name along the way. It could be our quest from Randy. Um, great contribution from Jade and Steph and, and Rianne in here. Lots of people adding to it. It's very hard to keep up. Bob, Bob, Bobby's adding that there's some wizards coming in. And then we get to the end of the show where um, the film where it says, I want you to imagine. Look, we, 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 we've got to start, I think. Awesome. That's more than a start. Yeah. I feel like I'm there. I'm like in there in that place right now. Where, when are we shooting it? I'm ready. Yeah, we'll just jump on aimmentoring.com. I reckon you'll be a good chance of getting yourself a creator grant if you put in a good application. Uh, and then for the next four weeks, we're going we're gonna to be riding on this. So Randy, L, Scott, we'd, we'd love to have you guys when you have space and time to jump on, add, add as little or as much as you'd like to. And um, I think to that, that idea at the top, yeah, L, like when we – when we imagine what's possible, when we use that yes end a collective community of supporting each other and lifting up ideas, um, we can really build something uh, fantastic. So thank you all for joining us today. Kalani, how did our panel go? That was went really well. I was genuinely shocked. I was just sitting here listening and it was something that their imagination is much more bigger than mine and it's something that I'm really glad that I was a part of as a silent partner a part of this and I thank you guys for coming on I just got to say I don't accept that Kalani I see your imagination and I see it bubbling and brewing and you are not a silent partner everyone on this call and part of this journey is giving the juice so thank you here here it's Kalani that was absolutely brilliant and also for hosting the segment uh, you know, uh, for my people, everything is so interconnected. We're in this holistic understanding that everyone has a part to play in this creating this utopia that we only dream of. And so uh, we want yourself, many young people as possible to understand where that imagination can go. And bloody hell, you can do whatever you like, as Randy said at the beginning. So much love. Beautiful. All right, gang, that's going to round out the show for today. Tomorrow we're going to come back with the, the Dreams documentary that we've created over the last few years, travelling around and asking primary school kids around the world where dreams come from, uh, which, Scott, you've encouraged me to, to get that off the shelf today to, to get that moving. Scott, have you got any, any final messages to, to people who are going to work on this film project with us as we look to imagine what's possible? Oh, well, I think uh, Yale hit the nail on the head at the beginning in terms of being open uh, to many uh, different imaginating 
juices that will evolve from this. It can go in any which direction. And I feel like, you know, you want to create a space where you wish the world could be, you know, that, that uh, utopia that I speak of before. And so if we can uh, take this into a space that really shows that there is no limit to any imaginative juices that we provide and actually expand and go wherever we can, um, do it in a way that uh, does it justice to the many imaginative juices around the world, you know? So, um, yeah. Absolutely. Thanks, Scott, for, for joining us on the show. You've been awesome and, and love your work, love the way you create, the way you're fusing all of this unbelievable story ink from so many generations that it's almost unimaginable to think how far back that, that has gone and, and then to weave that into to the ways that you tell stories is really beautiful. So thanks for joining us on the show. Randy, what, what's your message to the crew that's going to be creating this film with us, Imagine? Uh, look, I agree with Scott. I think, I think that idea of creating a space and tapping into the worldwide creative juices that, that we just, you know, that was, uh, that was a short amount of time with a few of us throwing ideas back and forth and look how much we got on the page collectively, I- inspiring each other, bouncing off each other, supporting each other. Um, that's all it takes. You create a safe space, throw a few creative minds in there and there is genuinely no limit to what you can achieve. And I'm, I'm, man, I don't know about you guys, but I'm bouncing forward into my day from this point. I feel inspired. I feel fulfilled. I feel creatively uh, light and full. So, yeah, man, I think we can, we can all just um, ride this wave and create something amazing. Completely agree with you. Thank you for, for, for launching your imagination daily for us as well and, and being a part of, of, of pushing the limits. So I'm bouncing as well. Randy, Yell, uh, any messages to the people that are going to be either writing or creating or coming across this concept with us and building it? Yes. So two things. So this COVID-19 thing means we get to start again in a big, big way. So echoing Scott's point that we can start to use this like architecture for our future. So really think about where you want to be and use that kind of like just around the corner idea. So you can bring in technology and ideas or, or, or social contract constructs that don't exist and bring them into this world, like planning architecture for your future. That's just around the corner. The second thing is we're talking in this really um, positive lovey dovey way. Um, and, and, and that's what we need for the creative process. Now for a story to work, we need conflict. We need obstacles. So just because we're talking really positively doesn't mean when you contribute to the script, you can't bring conflict or an obstacle in because that's really, really important in storytelling. Yeah, well, thank you for joining us on the show today and sharing a co-garage with me as we've managed to pull this off. And we got a comment uh, from Jade earlier that she loved your backdrop. So, Mum, there's some props to your print from the 80s or 90s that's that's behind Yelly at the moment. Original Bronwyn Bancroft. Absolutely. Yell, Scott, Randy, thank you so much for joining us today and being part of the show. To Miami State High School, to Sue Dalton, to our student audience, uh, to Afters and Nell Greenwood and, and the crew for supporting kicking start, kickstarting this project and to the funders that have got behind Imagine the Film and, and got us going to be able to release 500-odd grants. Thank you, everybody. Thanks to Cam who drove down and dropped this hoodie off so I could wear it today. And Cam, thanks for printing 500-plus hoodies. And to Scotty and to Dan who have been working on the design and, and moving around the clock. Kalani, how is your experience on the show today? It was awesome, Jack. It was, really, it was really, really good. And I think along the lines of flipping the script at school, and, and you know it's been quite different and and we've been flipping the script with the way we're learning here at, at least in Miami and I think you know with with our teachers and, and and teaching us quite rigidly you know through a curriculum flipping the script and using our imaginations is something that both AIM as well as the the rest of the school is something that you know where AIM provides and I think it's something that it's definitely going to be good to to try this out. Awesome. Well, thanks for joining us, Kalani. Can't wait to see what you add to the script as we as we build it out and echo what everyone said on the panel in terms of your imagination. There's no limits to our imagination. It's a muscle. We get to flex it every day. The only thing that destroys imagination is the word no. 
and saying that I don't have an imagination. So if you want to destroy it, um, that's how you do it. If you get rid of those two phrases, you're sweet. Thanks to the studio and audience today. It's not black and white. Said so huge imaginations on the show today. Uh, Panima Mahesh said this felt like a super safe space. No right, no wrong, and extremely inclusive. Ariane Miller, Randy makes me so happy. Scott Leonard, this is epic. Can't wait to see where this script lands. Thanks everybody for joining us on Imagination TV. We'll be back tomorrow with the youngsters who take on the, the live writing challenge. And during the week, we've got Mame Wyatt joining us. We've got Wayne Blair joining us and a bunch of wonderful people coming on the show to be a part of creating Imagine. And thanks for kickstarting maybe the world's first ever co-written feature film with a thousand plus people with 500 filmmakers. And to our guys who are going to be editing, let's hope we find some editors out there that want to help us out. All right, gang, have a wonderful day and we'll see you tomorrow. Oh, my God.